The SADC Observer Mission declared that those elections were not free and fair. The President of South Africa and the South African Diplomatic Corps to stand strong and simply reject the fact that what is going on there is correct. Stay away from the summit or have it moved to a different country where human rights are upheld. To these elections, when President Ramaphosa attended the inauguration, I thought to me it was a betrayal of SADC because already there was a declaration that the elections were not free and fair. Now is an opportunity to reset all of that. And Hello and welcome to Zim Watch TV. If you're looking for in-depth analysis on political news, social issues, and economic developments, you're in the right place. Our channel is dedicated to bringing you accurate, unbiased, and up-to-date information. Please subscribe to our channel and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all our latest videos. Musi Maimane calls for SADC summit boycott amidst Zimbabwe's human rights abuses. Musi Maimane, a prominent opposition leader, has urged President Cyril Ramaphosa and other SADC leaders to boycott the upcoming SADC summit if it is hosted by Zimbabwe's President Emerson Mnangagwa. Maimane's call comes amidst growing concerns over human rights abuses in Zimbabwe, including alleged torture, arbitrary arrests, and suppression of political dissent. In a passionate post on X, Maimane said, We must not roar about the war in Ukraine, but be quiet about the tragedy in Zimbabwe. We must be louder about the fire next door, because it burns our children and our homes. He emphasized that Ramaphosa's attendance at the summit would be seen as an endorsement of Manungugwa's regime and its abuses. Maimane's statement highlights the hypocrisy of condemning human rights abuses globally while ignoring those in Zimbabwe. He argued that SADC leaders have a responsibility to protect the people of Zimbabwe and promote democracy in the region. The call for a boycott has sparked debate with some arguing that engagement is better than isolation. However, Maimane's stance resonates with many who feel that strong action is needed to address Zimbabwe's human rights crisis. As the SADC summit approaches, the spotlight is on Ramaphosa and other leaders to take a stand against Manungugwa's dictatorship. Will they heed Maimane's call, or will they choose to engage with a regime accused of human rights abuses? The world watches as the drama unfolds. The people of Zimbabwe deserve better. They deserve leaders who respect their rights, protect their freedoms, and promote democracy. It's time for SADC leaders to take a stand and demand change in Zimbabwe. Opposition members have been arrested, some disappearing because the opposition there has been treated like criminals in a country of their birth where they feel they have convictions to fight for the people of Zimbabwe. And this is not a recent thing. It has happened as far back as when President Robert Mugabe was president. So a simple statement by the South African government, new posture as South Africa, that in fact we move and refuse to not only participate in the SADC, but to ultimately have it moved to a country upon which human rights are held. The only way to restore the credibility of Zimbabwe is to allow for democracy to thrive. That's about, as I've alluded to, holding free and fair. Musi Maimane further emphasized the dire situation in Zimbabwe, stating that the country is in a deep, deep crisis, where opposition leaders are treated like criminals in their own homeland. He highlighted the alarming trend of opposition activists being arrested and disappearing, a phenomenon that is not new but has been ongoing since the era of former President Robert Mugabe. Maimane's words painted a stark picture of a nation where political dissent is met with brutal suppression and citizens live in fear of their government. He argued that this toxic environment makes it impossible for the SADC summit to be held in Zimbabwe, as it would legitimize Manungugwa's regime and its abuses. Instead, Maimane proposed that the summit be moved to another country where human rights are respected and protected. This, he believed, would send a strong message that SADC leaders will not tolerate human rights abuses 
and will stand in solidarity with the people of Zimbabwe. By speaking out against Zimbabwe's human rights record, Maimane has reignited the debate about the role of SADC in promoting democracy and human rights in the region. As the summit approaches, all eyes are on Ramaphosa and other leaders to see if they will take a stand against Manungagwa's regime and stand up for the people of Zimbabwe. I must applaud the ANC for having upheld in our country, where if you are a lead, if you are in the opposition of any kind, you are willing, you are allowed to say and do what you'd like, mobilize as you want. Zimbabwe must enjoy the same right. Why? Is to allow for democracy to thrive. That's about as I've alluded to, holding free and fair elections, but actually allowing the opposition to exist. We must restore that what is an ANC-ZANU-PF relationship cannot be synonymous with a South African government and parliamentary responsibility as it speaks to the issue of Zimbabwe. Musi Maimane further criticised President Cyril Ramaphosa's attendance at Manungagwa's inauguration last year calling it a sign of betrayal to SADC principles. He pointed out that SADC had issued a report stating that the elections were not free and fair, making Ramaphosa's attendance a tacit endorsement of a flawed process. This move, Maimane argued, undermined the credibility of SADC and its commitment to democratic values. Maimane emphasized that allowing democracy to thrive is crucial for ensuring free and fair elections. He stressed that this can only happen when opposition parties are allowed to exist, mobilize their supporters, and express themselves freely. In contrast, Zimbabwe's opposition parties face constant harassment, arrest, and intimidation, creating a climate of fear and repression. Maimane praised the ANC and the South African government for allowing opposition parties in South Africa to operate freely. He noted that this has created a vibrant democratic environment, where diverse voices can be heard and citizens can hold their leaders accountable. He urged SADC leaders to follow South Africa's example and promote democratic principles in their own countries, rather than paying lip service to them. By speaking truth to power, Maimane has challenged SADC leaders to re-examine their commitment to democracy and human rights. As the region grapples with the crisis in Zimbabwe, Maimane's words serve as a reminder that true leadership requires courage, conviction, and a willingness to stand up for what is right, even in the face of adversity. The people of Zimbabwe deserve better, and it is time for SADC leaders to take a stand. A stable Zimbabwe is good for South Africa, but it is not going to be stable if we are turning a blind eye.